On the plaza, coming to you from the Big Apple, it's Much Music, your music video program, bringing you the mellow sights and sounds of your favorite easy listening artists. I'm your host, Dean Corduroy, and this is our lovely and charming hostess, Anna. Say hello, Anna. Anna. True professionals never rehearse in the air, Dean. Well, let's go over the lineup then. We are the show, not the music. Do you know that thousands of fans write to me every week thanking me for enriching their lives? Why, one woman even sent me a picture of her prize-winning Pekingese whom she named after me. Well, you never showed me that. Well, I consider it a personal treasure. Are you trying to tell me something? Oh, well, since you asked, my fans complain about you. They say that your hair is dreadful, that your intros have too many words, and that you don't play enough Andre Klaus Are you still brooding over what that man at the Kmart said about me? You do not have more star quality. The fans know me and love me the best. I give them something to aspire to. I, I guide them in their fashion sense, and I soothe them with my aura. Why, one fan even said that I reminded her of a young Shirley MacLaine. Do I hear Dan Corduroy? It's Dean. Dean, dear. Oh, Mr. Dan Corduroy, my mom and I watch your show every chance we get. Well, it is recommended you and on her IC ward. It is a pleasure to fly you, Mr. Dan Corduroy. Dean. Mr. Dan Corduroy, it is a pleasure to fly you. <laughs> sure I know where the plaza is. You think I don't know? I've been driving this hack for 20 years, for God's sake. This street looks familiar. I could have sworn this the second time we've passed that bum. Inseminated? You better believe it. It's the law. Bovine herpes. The federal government said to us cattle ranchers, store all the bull sperm you can, boys. It's liquid gold. We put it away, all right. Oceans of it. And then the beef market bottomed out? Bottomed out? And they ruined us. The red meat is poison. Can't give this stuff away. There's just no demand. And therefore, no demand for... I got five miles of salt mines in Utah brimming over with stuff. Why don't you just destroy it? Environmentalists say we can't dump it in the ocean without a 10-year impact study. Same thing with burning and landfill. The only approval I could get was from the Food and Drug Administration. Well, Mr. Weiner, uh, Weiner, Grissom, Spunt, and Cram are our best idea people. They should be here any minute. Good morning, Grissom, Spunt, Cram. Good morning, Mr. Jefferson. Good morning, Miss Roberts. Mr. Weiner. Ah, Weiner. We've spent considerable time studying the problem at hand. As far as distributing your product as a consumable is concerned, our market research has revealed that. Americans, and for that matter, Europeans, with the exception of the Belgians, would have strong resistance to consuming a product composed largely of. Based on this data, we've developed the following concept. We're here at Andre's Macrobiotic Restaurant on Fifth Avenue to discover the secret of his world-famous soya and carob loaf. May I help you? Andre, tell us the secret behind your renowned macrobiotic cuisine. I'll never tell. That's why it's a secret, isn't it? Oh, come on, Andre. Can't you see? I'm busy. More seasoning. It's bland. Spice it up. As you can see, we start with only the freshest ingredients imported daily from all over the world. But, Andre, that's not your secret either, is it? Well, I have an international team of cordon bleu chefs. No final staff exists anywhere in America. Too much pepper, fix that. But that's not your secret. 
Stop pestering me, I'll never tell. Andre, how much spurb for the soya carob loaf? Spurb, Andre? An American product? Yes, American, but it is Belgian. Spurb, American quality, imported taste. It's Belgian. Yo, gentlemen, it is clear that we have in our grasp a product of tremendous explosive potential for the mass market. In this light, we have chosen a very chic, very today, au courant kind of image. We think this will appeal strongly to our target market. Mais, um, qu'est-ce que c'est? Ça me sent comme... Non. C'est ma crème spéciale? Ah oui? Oui. <laughs> eh, cette crème spéciale, c'est un lubrifiant? Mm-hmm. Pour ma peau. Ah. Oh. C'est mon secret de beauté. D'après moi, ta bouteille n'est pas un secret. Oh, Jean. Superb, superb, regarde des fois. Gentlemen and ladies, we performed a myriad of extensive laboratory tests on samples of Spurb. Its effectiveness as a wax or sealant is nil. It possesses no anti-corrosive properties and it's far too fragile to survive as an oil or lubricant in today's high temp, high performance engines. On the whole, it seems that Spurb is quite inert, save for its somewhat uh, <laughs> pungent odor. It's just been refrigerated. However, based on our experience in the automotive aftermarket, we nonetheless believe that impractical doesn't mean unprofitable. And therefore, we feel strongly that Spurb can be a big, big wiener, a winner in the gasoline additive sector. Hi, my name's Chuck Miller, but all my friends call me Joyride on account of I like cars so much. <laughs> I like everything about cars. I like to drive them, I like to build them, I like to race them. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'd say cars are probably the most important thing in my life. Oh, well, except for possibly Doreen, she's my wife. Now, all of our children were conceived and delivered in cars. I wouldn't have it any other way. Matter of principle. Most people say that I learned to drive before I learned to talk. Uh, Doreen says I never learned to do either properly. But I'm proud to be an American, drive an American car, fill up with premium leaded American gasoline at an all-American filling station. And I use the only all-American lubricant and oil treatment in one, Spurb, a product of grade A American Bull. I must say I was very impressed with the presentations. But I think the best thing for us to do right now is to get us some lunch and talk things over. Oh, I know the best Szechuan restaurant. It's just down Szechuan, the street. Szechuan, boring, macrobiotics. Mr. Wiener wants something healthy. Healthy, yes, but not something that's going to block him up for days. Yeah, now look, I ain't picky. A couple of steaks would do just fine. <laughs> uh, where are you going? Subway's here. Oh, you're not serious. But the Lexington Avenue platform is much easier. What? Past all the bums? 43rd Street's the fastest to the platform. You two are totally out to lunch. I've tried them all. This is the fastest. Look, if it's all the same to you, why don't we just take a taxi? All right. Last one of the platform buys lunch. Ready? Go! Uh, what you call a project. And over there is where my cousin Rocco bit it in 42. He used to work for them Brindisi brothers, the no good scum. They used to run a waterfront back in the old days. We drove past there, remember, Anna? Yeah, dropped a sack of flour on his head from seven stories up, cracked his skull and six vertebrae. It was tragic, but you kind of had to laugh at it. <laughs> it was like their, their trademark, the Brindisi's. They were scum, but classy. You know what I mean, Anna. Uh, Tony, 
Yes, Annabelle? We're really enjoying the tour, but we're a little past for time and we should get to the park. Ah, uh, it's all the way across town. Let me show you the South Bronx instead. You will love it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. We should have taken the limousine. The company prepaid for a limousine. But you had to save two lousy dollars. Exactly, was a fan. A fan of yours, perhaps. Hey, is he giving you lip, Annabelle? Oh, no, that's all right, Tony. Sir, I demand that you turn this junk heap around, or I'll... What was that? I really couldn't tell you for sure. My old man always wanted me to go into the car business, but you know how it is. <laughs> Look, I I'll thank you to keep your annoying personal anecdotes to yourself. Hey. Don't give me no lip. Now listen, Annabelle. I'm gonna go get us a tote, see? Now in the meantime, don't you leave the car. You keep the doors locked and the windows rolled up and whatever you do, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Yeah, it's Tony. Yeah, listen, is Aldo Brindisi there? Yeah, the rotten scum. not coming. I knew it. I knew it. Would you stop whining? The least little bit of trouble and you go flying off the handle. Bit of trouble? You call this a bit of trouble? We're hours late, stranded out here in the middle of nowhere and... Uh, what are you doing? I have no intention of abandoning all semblance of normal, civilized behavior just because we happen to be a little pressed for time. I have an image to uphold. Oh, really? And who do you think is going to carry your image around for you? Your fans? We're going around in circles. Why won't you admit that you're lost? I'm not lost. I'm merely exploring the territory. That's it. I'm not taking another step. Do you know that 176 taxis have gone by? 177. And for what? To save two lousy dollars. Spend, spend, spend. That's all I hear out of you. Now just keep quiet and keep walking. I will not. I'm not moving an inch. Well, that's just fine with me. You can sit here all day for all I care. Because I've had it with you, mister. I get us to the big time and all you can do is gripe about every little minor inconvenience. Well, I can get along just as well. Better without you. Ha! 
confidence. This gent wears a city like a Brooks Brothers suit. Confidence. He carries it in his vest pocket, right next to his wall from 24 karat pocket watch. I'd commit suicide on the spot if I knew I'd come back just like him. <laughs> Confident! His generosity is, is consistent with his benevolent nature. The true hallmark of confidence. Oh, what have we here? An imposter, a fake, a charlatan, quick to temper and parsimonious with every little penny. Here, <laughs> buy yourself a thesaurus. <laughs> Redeemed in the eyes of his subjects, this David strides confidently to slay his next Goliath, a man of principles, of courage, of confidence. <laughs> oh, clearly a stunning example of today's modern woman from her Lagerfield Taylor tweet so oh my god At Andre's dinner is served at 5:30 sharp no one will be seated after the meal has begun I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, but uh, uh, don't you think an exception could be made in this case? After all, we did prepay both meals. There can be no interruptions. It detracts from the total dining experience. Of course, special accommodations can be arranged if you follow me. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's all right. I had them leave your dinner. I think you'll find the food quite interesting. Yeah. I hope so. I am famished. Welcome to Andres, everyone. I am Andre. I trust you are enjoying the dinner. The entree was my famous miso soup with leeks and sprouts. Followed by my superb soya and carob loaf. And for dessert, to top off this culinary masterpiece, I present you with a delightful carrot cake, smothered in my very own puree tofu prune flambe. Excuse me. No, we are not accepting reservations for the next week. Invitations only. It is my first anniversary. Oh yes, I studied in Bruxelles under Francois Legume, the leading authority on vegetarian hot cuisine. You call this hot cuisine? Pardon me? You call this hot cuisine? Cuisine. Macrobiotics, to be more precise. Or you are not familiar with the term uh, Mr. Uh... Brutus. Nick Brutus. Oh, yes. Late Mr. Brutus. As I recall, macrobiotics refers to the preparation of culinary delights derived entirely from plant sources. Your spurious facsimile, however, isn't even fit for a rabbit. I dare say, I found the meal even more nauseating than your embroidered French accent. It's Belgian. I'm undaunted by your criticism, Mr. Brutus. After all, this is one of the most expensive restaurants in all of New York. Which proves only that you possess more audacity than skill. Your tasteless food was surpassed only by your distasteful manner. Your soup tasted like bath water. Your soya loaf had the appeal of a dry sponge. Your dessert was reminiscent of garden dirt. You are an embarrassment to the entire food service industry. Schnurmacher of the times wrote, an evening at Andre is like an evening in heaven. Perhaps you shall find out. Bonsoir, Andre.
Music in Japan? Are you kidding? You brought Roger Whittaker to Tokyo. Oh, <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, no. Much music is such a modest little show. <clears throat> Mr. Dean Corduroy, my company, Pony, was the first to develop stereo television. This was for your show. <gasps> but Dean, where's Anna? Oh, we've we've had a little falling out. Uh, she's going to be doing the show alone. Impossible! Impossible. It's impossible for the sun to leave the sky. It's just impossible. You're impossible. Just impossible. Why won't you wear your glasses? George, you get so excited. I don't need them. And I don't need that chair either. Why? Where's Dean? Wake up and smell the coffee, George. This is a solo act now. But you're a team. We're a team. I dumped the overstuffed greaser. From now on, it's Anna's much music. And you know what that means. Yeah. It's dead air. All right, places, everybody. Five, four, three, two, one. You're on. Anna. Uh, uh, and I'm Anna. Uh, uh, where are the cue cards? She's made her bed. Now let her eat cake. Can she bake a cherry pie? Billy boy, Billy boy, can she bake a cherry pie? Charming Billy. Now bringing you a nostalgia flute back. Tarek and Violet, here's a look at Tony Bat. Here on your much music for yourself. Oh, God, is she? Still on the air. Okay, Sarah. Sarah. Dean Corroy, you and Anna are the yin and the yang of a music. Arun, you are nothing but an overstuffed greaser. But with Anna, you are Dean Corroy. I'm afraid my Dean Corduroy days are over. If you don't go to her now, you'll always regret it. Maybe not tomorrow, but soon. And for the rest of your life. Go to her, Dean. Remember, to err is human. But a picture tells a thousand words. At the plaza in the Big Big Apple, it's Much Music, your music video program. I'm your host, Dean Corduroy, and this is our lovely and charming hostess, Anna. Hello. We're coming to you live from the most glamorous cosmopolitan city in the world, New York. Thank you, George. Our director, George Franklin, reminds me that this portion of Much Music is being brought to you by the August Moon Piano Bar. And a special Much Music hello to Yashimoto and all the boys in the chorus. So long, farewell, I'll be the same good night. Coming up next, a long overdue Much Music special tribute to one of Anna's favorites, Andre Castellanos and his immortal Moon River contrasted with the disturbing yet serene poeticism of the South Bronx, captured as only the much music gondola can. Anna, 
shall we? Thank you.